Hey guys. All right, human progress. Arrow up, you've seen that before. I got really obsessed with human progress and it started when I was seven and my school forced me to cover my hair. Now that was not in Sweden where I live today, that was in Iran where I was born. Can you imagine this beautiful hair? <laughs> no, it took a while to get used to this hair, but I had to cover it and I uh, ran home one day and asked my mom, mom, why do they make me cover my hair? And all the girls. What should a mom say? She said, well, girls have long hair and Tehran is polluted. So, uh, to uh, sort of protect your hair, that's why, you know, girls wear their veil. Of course, that was what the moral police wanted me to do. And that was a white lie from my mother. So, as you might guess, questions like truth, moral, Morality, who owns morality, became an obsession of mine. And I realized it's not that easy. Who was being the good guy here? Someone who called themselves moral police or someone who brings a white lie? So, to many of my um, you know, co-Iranian um, and other people's um, detrimental uh, awareness, human progress do doesn't just go up it has a very high price when you take one step back. The two steps forward are important and they come and you know, technology advances us in all these great stories, we know that, but do we have to pay the high price of the one step back? And I really don't want that. I don't think we should go through World War II again. I don't think we should go through genocide again. We know that's not wise. So clearly I wanted to work on these questions, but something happened and growing up, I somehow chose to become only a business person. <laughs> so I remember, uh, you know, when applying to business school, I had uh, my uh, f my parents' friends coming over, almost like, you know, funeral uh, <laughs> uh, spirit. No, but you know, they were like, "Oh, your daughter didn't become a doctor. She couldn't even become a dentist. You know, worst case engineer, right? But business." Yeah, we had, uh, you know, in business, we, when we talk about growth, you've heard it today, it's so important with revenue, profit, numbers, just get them, more customers' loyalty, right? And honestly, I don't know how I ended up in business. Why is that important? And, you know, the big philosophical slides we made for our clients looked like this. You know, just uh, row faster, just get more. We, you know, we know all the tricks of the top companies, we decode them, and then you just repeat them and you become like them. The world had become VUCA since then. Does anyone know what VUCA is? V for volatility, U for uncertainty, C for complexity, but my favorite, A for ambiguity. Unfortunately, more facts, more information doesn't mean easier to get to the truth. It means more truths out there, alternative facts. Globalization, we have enough support, supporting data to say it is rising people out of poverty. It's the best thing ever. Another set of people who would say globalization actually increased the gaps. Some people will say AI is for good. Sophia over here is going to save us, right? The algorithm's just gonna, you know, make it better for us. Have you guys heard about the doomsday um, version of the AI? Like AI is gonna be dangerous. Who have heard the both versions? Does anyone here know the truth? Which one it is? Big questions. Unfortunately, even climate change has different truths existing. So how do we operate in this world? And in what direction? So those still waters of, you know, rowing and, you know, getting my competition in line and just, you know, getting from A to B uh, got complicated. Now everyone's wondering who are my competitors and probably Amazon, <laughs> regardless of which industry you're in. Uh, but the water looked like this today, right? We heard it earlier. We need clarity in this world. We don't know where to go. Can you see where to go in this wave? We're going to Mount Fiji, but it's not always clear. You know, everyday instructions are changing, so leaders are becoming better at, you know, formulating, articulating why, articulating visions, 
values to get people to get engaged in these boats and dare to experiment, dare to do these crazy things, right? We know all the tricks how you get people on board to do crazy things, yeah? One of my clients went through exactly the same thing. They won the rowing competition. They actually had a tagline called, kill the competition. <laughs> and they did. Um, and what's really ho a hopeful me message here is that after winning the sort of money game, they were like, there's something missing. We want meaning. So they flew in us meaning makers. I had the chance to work with Mr. Y himself, and we ran over there with our team, and we articulated purpose and really nice corporate poetry, right? Putting up on the walls. And I still today feel like they have the best intentions of that. But this time, when I did one of these projects, I got stuck on 27th floor up here in this building in Manila. Because when we wrote all these great good values, I all of a sudden didn't know how I would define it. And I was like, what if my client comes in and he says, Bita, by the way, um, could you define what good means? Uh, like, you wrote a bunch of words. What are, what are good values? And I got stuck. <laughs> I didn't know, I mean, what is universal good values? You know, we hear good to great, but obviously we need to define great. <laughs> right? Is it enough to say, no, we have a good culture here. <laughs> it's great. So I did what many of you guys would do in a panic situation. First you freeze, then you Google. So Google says, what's right is what's morally good, and what is good is what's morally right. That was not very helpful, Google. So I ran to the nearest bookstore. Philosophy, biology, biology Paul Zak on trust. There's a lot of books, biographies, uh, psychology, and I was like, okay, I am not the first person panicking about what is good, what is really good. See, I had gone from the world of facts, in a way, you know, when you just compare numbers and you just say, grow your business and compare, I mean, that's not too difficult. You don't have to engage your ethics. Right? You just compare numbers. It's easy. But now I had entered the world of values. And we all know, yes, it works. We know they work, right? We know values create stories and stories engage us. We already know these things, guys. But what do they engage us in? Is it enough to have employee engagement? And this is the hardest slide I ever have to show, but these are Auschwitz guards who are engaged. So yeah, you can build strong cultures, but can they blind you? And I knew that I was stuck. And I now know what I was stuck in. I was stuck in the second wave of culture work. And I'm going to go through what culture um, waves are. The first wave of culture work is the code of conduct time. Who here has gotten the code of conduct binder? Right? The instructions, the details. Who here has you know, read them and remember them? So they have been amazing leaders who have empathy, who are like, hey guys, my employees are not going to read that. So I'm just going to help them summarize three, five, seven key values, and I'm going to repeat them until they get them. And the best leaders did so. They involved us top down, right? They repeated the vision, they repeated the why, they repeated the direction. And that's really good and important. And the second wave of sort of involvement goes like this. I'm going to just give you a, a little taste of that. Hey, welcome to this company. We are a tree company. Welcome, everyone. We have these values. And uh, so trust, innovation, passion, and integrity. And I really think that, you know, if I just repeat integrity enough times, one day you will feel it, right? And then you're going to be like, oh, <laughs> integrity. See, a lot of um, knowledge has its uh, core at, um, as repetition. Right? We say repetition is the mother of knowledge, and it works, but it doesn't work with values. 
And this is why. See, um, we have worked a lot on repeat, repeating competencies, and you know, we have one of our psychological needs being the need to feel competent. And in this VUCA world where everything is changing, honestly, this like traditional need is even harder today to feel, right? But companies are really good at trying to make me feel competent. And um, they're also very good at making you feel belonging. I mean, we know the tricks. Not all companies do this, but we know how to create cultures. And, and unfortunately, some people do this too good, right? They blind you and, and they make you do things you probably shouldn't. But one thing that we have forgotten, and I think maybe this could be the antidote to groupthink, is our need to feel autonomy. So this has become my favorite little guy. <laughs> So the third wave incorporates autonomy. Switch the order. Ask the person first, what do you value? And then ask, can you contribute to our shared values? Do you want to try this? Yeah? All right, so I want you guys to get a piece of paper and a pen. And if you don't have it, I want you to be able to remember three words. All right. So paper and a pen. And I want you to draw up two trees, one to the left, one to the right. It should look like this or whatever type of tree is your favorite, maybe palm tree, time for vacation, and then you draw a bridge in between. To the left, you're going to put your values, to the right, our shared values, and I'm going to come back to that. And for those of you who don't usually go walk around knowing your top values, I'm going to give you a little uh, guide, because me, honestly, a few years ago, I thought I knew my values, but I would not, not be able to write them down. So do you guys want a little guide on how to get your values? All right, I'll give you a teaser. All right, so values come in three layers. We have our foundational values and the roots. We have, this is what you need every day to feel good. Self-fulfillment is what you need to develop and grow yourself. And hopeful message again, once you have these things, humans want to give, okay? So those are the greater good values. Now, I want you guys to pick one word of the words I'm gonna show here. So clearly we're going to use our intuition because it's going to be fast. So the, this is what you need to feel good and function well. Go. So pick a word that comes to you. Okay? Don't try to think too much. Just pick the word that your eyes is sort of stuck on. Excellent. And if none of those words work, you just put something that you need every day to feel good. Self-fulfillment. What do you need to express yourself and develop yourself? Are you ready for the words? Yes. All right. Perfect, and when you have taken care of your base and you are fulfilled, now you want to give back to the world. So what do you want to contribute with to the world? Pick a word. Excellent. Now your paper should look like this-ish. Who here has a paper that sort of looks like this? Great, nice work. All right, so the shared values, I mean, we all come from different organizations, but I realize one thing we have in common here is the Nordic Business Forum. So I went online uh, today and I looked up uh, some of the values that were expressed. So let's, you know, obviously we're here because we share something with you guys, so I'm just gonna put them up here. And now we're gonna make the bridge. Okay, so how is the bridge? Well, the bridge is, can I see any way that I can live my personal value and at the same time contribute to, to any of these? Any of these. Okay. So just think of that story. Someone here who can find one bridge between their personal value and the shared? Okay. In what way? Which value? Which personal value you were me. raising? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, one of them were uh, meaning, and I uh, attached it to cross-generational thinking. Hmm. So when you live your own value, meaning, you can contribute to the cross-generational thinking. And personally, I feel like I need a lot of courage to be entrepreneurial. Right? See how that works? What we're missing today when we build cultures is celebrating human autonomy. In fact, a lot of cultures try to avoid human autonomy. They're afraid of it. 
because they think if we have free thinking individuals, maybe they won't join my uh, movement. And maybe they shouldn't. <laughs> if humans can think for themselves and they don't want to join your movement, then it's not a good movement. Thank you. <laughs>